In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for CaNO3 2 plus K3PO4, calcium nitrate plus potassium phosphate. So the first thing we do with these net ionic equations, we need to balance the molecular equation, and this is the molecular equation. I'll just write the coefficients in. If you need help, you can watch my video on balancing this equation, the molecular equation. Next, we need to write the states. Nitrates are very soluble. We expect that to dissolve and water to be aqueous and split apart into its ions. Let's check the potassium phosphate, see what happens with that. So this is a solubility table and we can find potassium right here and then phosphate right here. You see many of the phosphates are insoluble, but potassium phosphate, that has an S. That means it's soluble and it'll dissolve. So this will dissolve, so we write aqueous because it'll be dissolved in water. Calcium phosphate though, here's calcium right here, and if we look across, we see that I for calcium phosphate. That means it's insoluble. It's not going to dissolve in water. It's going to be a solid. So we'll write solid right here. When these two compounds, these two aqueous compounds are mixed together, we'll have calcium phosphate formed. It'll be a solid. It'll fall to the bottom. It'll be a precipitate. So this is a solid. Uh, nitrates again, they are very soluble dissolve in water aqueous. So now we have our states. Now we can split the strong electrolytes apart into their ions. Strong electrolytes, these are the aqueous ones, so we can split those up. Calcium's in group two on the periodic table. It has a two plus ionic charge. And the nitrate ion, that has a one minus. You should remember that NO3, that has a one minus charge. So we have three calcium ions, three Ca2 plus, and I won't write aqueous each time. I'll write all that at the end. Plus, for the nitrate ion, that NO3 minus, we have two of them times three. So we have six nitrate ions. For the potassium phosphate, potassium's in group one. It has a one plus charge. Phosphate ion, that's three minus. So for our potassium ion, that K plus, we have three of them times two. So we have six of those plus the phosphate, that PO4, 3 minus, we have two phosphate ions. So those are the reactants. Let's do the products. For the calcium phosphate, we said that's a solid. It's at the bottom of the test tube. We can't split that apart because it's not split apart in our test tube. So we're just going to put Ca3PO4, 2. And that's a solid. Plus, we said potassium was plus minus. We have six of those potassium ions and the six, it applies to everything. So we have six nitrate ions as well. So at this point, we have the complete ionic equation. We have all the ions that we can split up. They're all split up and the solid, we left that alone. Now we'll cross out what are called spectator ions. They're on both sides of this complete ionic equation. So these are things that haven't changed. And since they haven't changed, we're really not interested in them. We'll just get rid of them. Let's see. We have six of these nitrates here and six here. We can just cross that out. Six potassium ions, six here. Cross it out. But everything else is different. Everything else is unique between the reactants and the products. So these are the things that have changed in our chemical reaction. We have three calcium ions, two phosphate ions, and we end up with, in the products, this calcium phosphate, which is a solid, it's a precipitate, and it falls to the bottom of the test tube. Let me clean this up, and we'll come back with a nicely formatted net ionic equation for calcium nitrate plus potassium phosphate. So this is the net ionic equation for CaNO3 2 plus K3PO4. We have our aqueous written in here, for these compounds that are still dissolved in the water. And in this reaction, these two come together and they form a solid, which is a precipitate. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.